One of the most interesting recent trends in indie gaming is the revival of the PlayStation 1 graphical style. This has been particularly popular in the horror space due to the creepy atmosphere and uncanny nature evoked by the graphical limitations of the platform. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can recreate this style in Unity for your own projects. Let's get started. This should probably go without saying, but the first step is to create low poly models. The average model on the PlayStation would have anywhere from 10 to 500 tries, going up to around 500 to 1000 for a character. Try to keep your try count low, and for thin objects, consider just using a 2D plane. For objects like trees or bushes, two planes crossed orthogonally from one another has a nice effect. The next step is texturing. The PlayStation supported textures up to 256 by 256 in size, with 64 by 64 and 128 by 128 being most common. So again, keep the texture size small and make sure you can see individual pixels when UV mapping. There are lots of resources online to find textures. I've linked a few in the description. Simply scale these down to the appropriate size in an image editor. For a horror game, make sure to keep the brightness low and the colors muted in your textures as well. Now unlike the N64, the PlayStation did not support texture filtering, so make sure to have the texture filtering set to point when you import into Unity. This is one of the key aspects to make your game look like a PS1 game in particular. One of the most famous effects of the PS1 and one that's vital to get the authentic look is the affine texture warping effect caused by inaccurate texture mapping. The PlayStation also had a very low precision floating point support, causing models to jitter a little as they move. I've linked a shader in the description that's able to replicate these effects for you in Unity. Another key factor that works great with horror games is draw distance and fog. Many PlayStation games had a poor draw distance and this was often covered up with fog, which is a classic look and essential for a horror game. Think of that look of the original Silent Hill games. The next piece of advice, and one that's contrary to most game dev wisdom, is to make the controls as terrible as possible. You have to remember, the original PlayStation controller looked like this. Notice anything? This means you need to use the D-pad or WASD for walking, and consider using two other keys or buttons for camera controls, or consider having a toggle between controlling the character and camera using the D-pad. You may even want to use the classic tank controls from Resident Evil. You should also make your character's movement speed really slow. This works especially well for a horror game as the lack of control over your character can increase the fear when you can't escape and hide as deftly as you'd like. For the final touches, make sure to set the resolution to 256 by 224 for that authentic feel. Now let's take a look at a scene that I was able to create in a few hours using the techniques that I've discussed here. And that's all I have for you. If you want to see more videos like this one, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.